Welcome back. This is Chris and my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, date today is August 16th, year of our Savior, 2020. And the title of this uh, video series is going to be called uh, Phallus Worship Part 4. Phallus Worship Part 4. Um, so, continuing here, folks, learning all about the, um, the Roman Catholic Church is now the seat of Satan. The seat of Satan began with Nimrod in Babylon and was passed to Egypt. And, of course, all this, all this uh, phallus worship is, is all over the world. I mean, it's, it's big in India and Japan. Japan has a, a festival every year where they uh, parade around a, a pink uh, phallus, a uh, pink penis, and they got it's just this big thing. But remember that Japan worshipped the sun. Um, their flag represented mm -hmm. the sun during World War II. And the earthly representation of sun worship is um, worshipping Nimrod or Baal's shaft. Um, worshiping Osiris's phallus. So we see continuing here that the, um, the shepherd's crook or uh, crossier uh, carried by the Pope is the magical crook traced directly to Nimrod who was the first shepherd king. The mitre worn by the Pope represents the mouth of a fish and was worn by the pagan Philistine fish god uh, Dagon which is another name for Nimrod. Also, the tiara worn by the popes is identical in shape to that worn by the Philistine fish god, Nimrod. Okay, all right, so continuing about this obelisk uh, worship, folks, we see here that um, how is it that this very abominable thing came to be placed here as we study, as referring to obelisks, uh, we uh, discover that as the mystery religion spread to Rome, along with it came the use of the obelisk as a symbol. And not only were obelisks made and erected at Rome, but the very obelisks of Egypt. Yes, so you have an Egypt-Rome connection. And also you have that exactly um, as you have this mystery school, that is also a connection of the counterfeit Bibles that over 90% of churches use today, and they're all united. Mystery Babylon between Egypt and Rome is all united against the King James Bible, the living Word of God. So that's why we stand for the living Word of God. And um, so what do we see? We see that and not only were obelisks made and erected at Rome, but the very obelisks of Egypt at great expense were hauled to Rome and erected by the emperors and dedicated to the sun god in pagan days. And such was in the case with the obelisk that stands before St. Peter's. It is not a mere copy of an Egyptian obelisk, but it is the very same obelisk that was worshipped in Egypt in ancient times. Isn't that crazy? They brought the same one. Same one. They didn't make one. They, they had the same one. Caligula in uh, 37 to 41 AD had this obelisk transported from Heliopolis. Remember, Helio meaning sun and polis meaning city, sun city, Egypt, to his circus on the Vatican Hill where now stands St. Peter's Cathedral. Now Heliopolis, the city from which the obelisk was originally transported, is but the Greek name of Beth Shemesh, Beth Shemesh, which was the center of Egyptian sun worship in olden days. And this was the very place of which we read in the Bible of the false worship that existed there and in which special mention is made of the images or obelisks of Beth Shemesh, house of the city in Jeremiah 43, 13. Really, Jeremiah 43, verse 13. 43, 13? Yes, Jeremiah. 43... 13. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses mm -hmm. of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. So that's a direct reference to obelisk. Yeah. You had obelisk in Egypt. So and so 
the very same obelisk that once stood at the ancient pagan temple at the center of Egyptian paganism, Heliopolis or Beth Shemesh now stands before the temple that is the center of modern paganism. The so-called Cathedral of St. Peter, the mother church of Catholicism. And it's universal. That's what Catholic, Catholic means is universal. And it is a universal mother goddess system. This seems like more than a mere coincidence, folks. The red granite obelisk of the Vatican is itself 83 feet high, 132 feet high with its foundation, and weighs 320 tons. In 1586, to make certain that this obelisk was centered rightly, right directly at the entry of the cathedral. It was moved a short distance to its present location, St. Peter's Square, by order of Pope Sixtus V. Of course, the moving of this heavy object, especially in those days, was a very difficult task. Many movers refused to attempt the feat. Well, especially when the Pope had attached a death penalty to it if it was damaged. <laughs> hey, you move this, well, if it falls over, you're dead. Uh, so it's a death penalty. Uh, the obelisk was, uh, if the obelisk was dropped and broken, such a regulation in itself indicates how much importance that the Pope and his people accredited to this abominable idol. Imagine this, folks. I mean, setting this up. This is now the seat of Satan. Yep. Dealing with phallic worship. Phallic worship, folks. And that's why we've been saying for a very long time, why would you get your Bibles from Rome, the seat of Satan? And no telling what they sacrificed at the base of that um, obelisk. Yeah, who knows? How I mean, that city is built on dead man's bones. A lot of them are just been saints sacrificing, killing, murdering. Satan, Moloch, Moloch means king, the king Nimrod, sacrificing children. So if sacrificing children's going on today, do you think we might make note of it? And Nimrod was the first one to introduce planet worship which forms the names of the days of the week that we have, and that forms our cosmology. Do you think that casts spells and unleashes magic that should be bound by what? The living word of God. But we hear nothing about it today. And then now people are offended when you say the flat earth. So, continuing folks, This, finally, a man by the name of Domenico Fontana accepted the responsibility of the moving and erection of the Vatican obelisk. Now it's called the Vatican obelisk. With 45 winches, 160 horses, and a crew of 800 workmen, the task of moving began. The date, September 10th. 1586, multitudes crowded the extensive square. While the obelisk was being moved, the crowd, upon penalty of death, was required to remain silent until the erection was made. <laughs> so if you say anything, they'll be put to death? Kind of like uh, when you're golfing, right? You just you keep quiet until after they make the shot, right? Well, it was, it was a death penalty, yeah, because you don't want to be distracting them. So it shows you the importance that it was because this is the seat of Satan. So in setting up Baal's shaft. And folks, I, you know, it's just like you have Freemasonry has been at odds with the Roman Catholic Church and this and that. But they're all connected, folks. We say they're at odds. Yeah, exactly. But the Knights Templar, now called Freemasonry, right, has set up and built the largest obelisk in the world, 555 feet tall and 6,660 inches tall, and of course it's the wide, it's all bale shaft. It is Nimrod shaft. It is unbelievable, folks. It really is. So, um, 
So we see again, we see how much importance the Romish uh, church attributed to this idol. Finally, after near failure, the obelisk was erected to the sound of hundreds of bells ringing, the roar of cannons, and the loud cheers of the multitude. Man, they're really getting into Baal's shaft, Stephen. Yeah. Wow. The idol was dedicated to the cross. The idol was dedicated to the cross. That makes no sense. So... And then Mass was celebrated, and the Pope pronounced a blessing on the workmen and their horses. And if you look that up, the accompanying drawing shows how the cross-shaped St. Peter's Cathedral and circular court in front of it are laid out. In the center of this courtyard is the pagan obelisk. The circular cord is formed by 248 Doric-style columns, which cost approximately $1 million. Now, the use of such pillars was borrowed directly from the styling of pagan temples. We show uh, below, we see uh, the Tell Temple of Diana as one, one of many examples of how the columns were used in heathen temples. Well, why not? Because it's a continuation of the mystery Babylonian religion. And like the obelisks, the columns were often regarded as mystery forms of the phallus. So the phallus, the columns also represent the phallus. In the vestibule of the pagan temples of the goddess of Hierapolis, for example, an inscription referring to the columns reads, I Dionysus dedicated these phalli, phalli would be plural of phallus, these phalli to Hera, my stepmother. And yet these columns were used in abundance to form the circular St. Peter's Square which surrounds the Egyptian obelisk. Certainly such symbolism did not originate in Christianity, folks. Even the choosing of the Vatican Hill for the location of the Mother Church of Catholicism was a result of a mixture with paganism. You see, in olden times, this hill, as the very word indicates, was a place of divinations. Vaticinia. Vaticinia. The place of divinations. It's a satanic site, folks. The name is said to have come from the name of the divination, a deity, Vaticanus, who had headquarters on this hill. Then at a later time, the hill was used for the annual festivals in honor of Addis or Tammuz or Horus, son of, great, of the great mother, Isis, right? At this festival, a pine tree was felled and to its trunk an effigy of God was fastened. This effigy was later buried in a tomb. Such rites are still carried on today in all Catholic countries. Rites that are a mixture of ancient paganism with Christianity. Since some of the ancient rites in honor of Tammuz were similar to the events that had happened in the life of Christ, his death, burial, etc., <clears throat> Paganism and Christianity were merged almost without interruption for these pagan ceremonies were enacted in a sanctuary on the Vatican Hill which was afterward taken over by the Roman Catholics and the Mother Church of St. Peter now stands upon uh, the very spot. Stephen, do you have any examples of anything dealing with phalluses today? phallus worship today. Well, they've got all kinds of celebrations uh, with phallus worship from Japan to uh, Bahrain. Um, okay, in Japan, don't they have a festival every yes, year? Yes, yes. Where got, they carry around a, a pink penis. Yep, yep. I don't make this stuff and they up, make, uh, They make, um, phallic worship has been going on for years and years and years. The Shiva Lingam is phallic worship. Um, okay, yeah, he's saying Shiva Lingam which is um, in India, they have this, this stone structure that is representing the womb with this um, the vaginal part, and then they place this stone in the center representing the lingam, 
or the male penis. And that's where you got the yoni and the lingam, and that is referring to the male. The, the yoni is the woman, and the uh, lingam is the phallus. In India, big time, folks. Yeah. Big time. Uh, which is actually that... I, I, I'm trying to think of what it's called, but that forms is what the, in my opinion, the Vatican has used as their courtyard layout, placing the lingam or the um, the lingam in the yoni or the uh, Vatican obelisk from Heliopolis, uh, bale shaft right in the center of that courtyard. Mm -hmm. Um, then you also have, I believe, the uh, that parade every year, right? In in Japan, they got and the Ottoman Empire's got the phallus work. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the Ottoman Empire, okay, which was um, the uh, Islam, and they took over the Greek Greek Orthodox to a large extent. So, and then I believe it's in ba Batu or something, isn't that in China? Batu, yeah. Batu, and that's what their main. Thing is, they just they mm -hmm. have wood. They carve out wood. They make stone penises. Yeah, you know that's what it's all penises. about. Penises. They make. Uh, yeah, they make all kinds of penises. Phallic worship. Yeah, the the peanut that's right in the middle of the Catholic uh, the courtyard there. Yeah, absolutely. It's phallic symbol. So this all comes from Nimrod being cut into pieces, turning into a religion, and then we have um, being. Uh, mythologized into uh, Egyptian mystery religion and in this mystery religion from Babylon went all over went through uh, India um, and from India spread into um, Asia um, oh go ahead my brother they actually say that uh, the Muslims practice phallic worship because when they pray they get in the position of being probed That's oh they, really yep with their butt in the air really yeah I never knew that. I didn't either. I know that they get in the shrines, those very high, which are nothing more than... Um, now they put their head all the way down and put their butt in the air. Wow. Which is what you would, you know... Wow. If you're going to... Wow. Yeah. It's all perversion, folks. It is. That's what Satan does. It's yep. all based upon the religion of sex. Um, as you can see in those um, steeples that um, that they were you that they use, I forgot what they're called, um, but that is also representing Baal's shaft. It says thousands of the phallic believers in the Muhammad Muslim religion getting metaphysically penetrated from behind when they pray. I've never heard that. Wow, but that doesn't surprise me. That is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, wow, what do you say to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Do you have any more on that? I can continue here. Yeah, keep going. Uh, okay. Hindus, the Hindus, of course, have it. Uh, India's got it. The Muslims, you know. And the, you can in 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 um, and uh, India or the Hindu religion, you can actually buy those um, those stone um, statues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Statues yeah. with, and then you place a um, a stone in the center, which is the lingam inside the yoni. Um, and that's representing the, the male and female. I believe it's um, Shiva, which is the male, and uh, the female forces coming together, which is exactly what the star of uh, Solomon's seal, it's not the star of David, but it's the star that's found in uh, all the occult religious systems, which is the, um, we know that the triangle, the pyramid facing up, is representing Osiris' phallus, and then it facing down is representing Isis. Um, and that also could be um, done in the um, Washington Square representing the Pythagorean theorem, um, which is representing the uh, uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is true math, but they also have a religion behind it. And that is the mother, uh, the father and mother coming together and producing the um, the counterfeiter, the pagan messiah. Um, so we see this going on throughout the world. It's in America, folks, uh, the mm -hmm. Washington. It's in Africa. It's in Africa. It's all over. It is a universal phallic religious system, and, and we're all... We're all participating. The tree that people use in their home is also representing a phallus symbol. Um, uh, so, yeah, 
It's, it's incredible. But all of that is dealing with is the phallus worship is obviously perversion, uh, sacrificing children, worshiping the host of heaven. God condemns it all. Having priests in the groves, which we have going on in the Bohemian Grove, folks. You, it's called Bohemian Grove for a reason. And they have a cremation of care, a, a mock sacrifice. Who knows what they do there, folks? It's blocked off. So we can't really find out what's going on there. And they bring in um, male prostitutes, folks. Uh, Josiah in 2 Kings chapter 23 bro brought this system down, folks. And uh, so we have these images of jealousy uh, and uh, set up in, in the house of the Lord or in front of the house of the Lord. Sun worship, uh, worshiping the host of heaven, mm. planets. It's wandering all stars. wandering stars, folks. And we're using it today and we wonder why we're um, having the problems that we are. We're getting our doctrine from the seed of Satan, folks. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. And then today, as we've been talking about for a very long time, of the Society of Jesus, now we'll get into that next time, God willing, but the Society of Jesus, what is their symbol? They worship the black sun, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but they have the symbol IHS. Now, they'll give a different meaning, but I'm talking about the actual occult Hid meaning stands for Isis, Horus, and Set. Uh, so we're looking at the mother, uh, mother goddess worship. It's a mother church. They elevate. That's why they have. Uh, she is the co-redemptrix, right? She's the co-mediator. They say uh, pray to Mother Mary. Pray to Mother Mary. That mother church. They say, oh no, we worship Jesus. So they speak out of both sides of their mouth. So you have this going on today, and then we have um, the church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, um, basically seizing control uh, through the Society of Jesus, founding the universities and controlling um, the priestcraft controls, the Babylonian priests control the information. So from this Satan seat, what do we have? We have Helios. Helios is where we get the Vatican obelisk, right? Heliopolis is the, the city of the sun, the worshiping of the sun and worshiping of, of, the, of the penis, a symbol of the penis. And that is where we're revolving around the sun right now. That's what they say. You know, we're heliocentric. That came from the seed of Satan. Mm -hmm. That came from Babylon. And then you also have evolution. Evolution also came from the seed of Satan, yeah. folks. These were papists. These were people that hated Jesus Christ, hated the living word of God. They're enemies. They're antichrists that have crept in unawares. So... All right. You have anything more, Stephen? No, that was it. I mean, just okay. Japan all right. Festival, Shiva, and they're just. All I mean, there's world. a bunch of stuff, folks. Yeah. You want to look through, but it's so pornographic. We just want to, sh you know, just let you know that this is a worldwide mother goddess religious system. Very much so. And uh, so that's what we're seeing. And so, as every uh, Catholic leaders borrowed other things from paganism, we need not be surprised that they also copied the idea of building elaborate, expensive temples as their main church, the St. Peter's, which is the largest church in Christendom. The world mind, worldly minded church thought they should build such a temple, a temple of greater splendor than those of the old Roman religion. And so, fashioning its design after the pattern of the pantheon of pagan Rome, only more elaborate, St. Peter's was finally completed at an estimated cost of $50 million. Wow. Way back then, folks. $50 million. That's a lot. And to this day, many still suppose that God wants his people to build costly and elaborate temples of worship. In fact, church construction has been big business. Yeah, we got the mega churches today yep. in America. But in this practice of putting multiplied thousands and sometimes millions of dollars into a fancy church building in accordance, is, is it accordance with the scriptures? Huh. Did Jesus or the apostles give any such plan or teaching? 
What is God's plan in this connection? We know that God directed his people under the rulership of King Solomon to build a temple in the Old Testament, and the Lord chose to put his presence there. But coming to the New Testament, the Holy Spirit no longer dwells in temples made with men's hands. Acts 17, 24. Now God dwells in his people, his church, by the Spirit. By the Spirit. And so Paul says, Ye are the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Understanding this truth, the early church filled with the Spirit never went forth to build temples of stone and steel. They went forth to preach the gospel right, of the kingdom. Right. The good news, ladies and gentlemen. Right. The message of that glorious kingdom to come. Ephesus was never put on a building. Never. They never, uh, they did not resort to financial drives and oppressive pledges in an attempt to build a fancier building than a temple down the street. No, their time and money was put into the message. Into the message, not a building. In fact, we have no record of a church building as of such being erected prior to to about 222 to 235 AD. So they were more focused on spreading the gospel of the kingdom. You know the problem today? We have church buildings today and the governors and the corporate America have said you can't meet in the buildings, right? COVID not 2019. And so now you could be in prison, right, for going and worshiping. If we didn't have these mega buildings, we'd be meeting in homes. Mm -hmm. We weren't worried about the buildings. We we're worried about the gospel of the kingdom, that you earn it not through works, not through the priestcraft, not through Nimrod's bale shaft, mystery religion, system of works, but only through the gospel of the kingdom, through Jesus Christ, the one true mediator. God bless you. Good night.